Okay, let's look at uh, multi-step synthesis here. You want the last one still? Okay, we got benzene green, we got this over here. We gotta start with what? Does it give us any starting department? Start with benzene. To start with, with benzene. With benzene? Yeah. Okay. Um well, you can't do a one-step credo crafts. You can't put a chlorine here and think you're just going to do a one-step credo crafts. Um, well, the main functional group out here is an ether. How do you make ethers? One common way to make an ether, that is the Williams and ether synthesis. Okay? You can either break this bond or this bond, yeah? Mm -hmm. What if we break the one on the end and go back to... I'm just going to call this funnel right here. Boom, boom, boom. Go back to what? Maybe this, this anion plus maybe ethyl bromide. Would those two react to give this coming forward? Yes, by SN2, yeah? Okay. Main functional group. How do you make main functional group? We have an ether synthesis. Cover that during test one. Okay, we don't, I mean, uh, we don't just forget things. Comprehensive, we're building towards, building our toolbox, building towards working comprehensive, multi-step synthesis problems. Uh, well, this here is essentially the, let me just put an OH there, right? Because you had this, could you convert it to the anion? We can come back to this, that's kind of obvious. This is just SN2. How would you convert this to the anion? Do what? You can, you can protonate it, right? And move the movement No, you need to deprotonate it. Somebody? Sodium metal is very common. Didn't we, did we ask, use sodium metal in the lab? We cut some sodium in lab. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what do we have here? An alcohol. How do you want to make alcohols? You ever made alcohol before? It's also it's also something carbon carbon OH. This can go back to what if this goes back to this nucleophile <coughs> plus this epoxide? Would those two react to give that after H plus workup? Mm -hmm. H plus workup. And this essentially looks like what? Like, mm -hmm. like Grignard? Isn't Grignard that? Yeah? How do you make a Grignard? Bromobenzene plus magnesium? How do you make bromobenzene? Yes. Yeah. We go back to benzene and we can bromidate it with Br2 and what else? Iron. Fe Br3 or just Fe? Yes? Mm -hmm. So we started with benzene. Bromidate, make Grignard, we add Grignard with epoxide, work up is going to give the alcohol, deprotonate it, and do an SN2 to put on the alpha group.
may have an alternative synthesis, alternative steps. Often you can do other routes, other approaches. Any questions about this? All right. Well, on page 35, did you see a uh, chemical test for anything that looks like chemistry in the information given? So what's the chemical test on page 35? Everybody hear that? Page 36, what does that one tell you? It does not react with chemical Okay, and the other two don't seem to have chemical tests. Well, the other one kind of does. Uh, what does it mean to react with KMNO4 and not react with KMNO4? Okay, so you need to know what type of compound would react with KMNO4, what type of compound would not react with KMNO4. That's basically the chemical test. Yeah? Okay. Do you have any issues with that? If it, if it has not been made clear, please let me know. Sometimes on quizzes and tests, you give us the starter material, you want us to give you the uh, end material without necessarily showing the mechanism. Do you um, 
want us to give you all of the possible uh, outcomes due to the effects of you just want you want us to give you like a major major. Remember you mentioned in the lecture how like I believe one was scared to him that if it would have went um, ortho, it would have been like kind of scared to him. But an ortho pair director means the ortho and pair products, if possible, are going to be major. Yeah. It all depends on the question. If, if there's no nothing else given, I would I would not include sterics, ortho pair or none. Don't don't consider anything else unless unless the question asks you to consider something else. But if I just give you phenol and say if you brominate, what you're going to give? It's going to give ortho bromophenol and pair bromophenol. Those would be the two major products compared to the meta. You will get very little, if any, metabromophenol. Um, so you're either going to get orthopair products or meta. Yes, an orthopair director is going to theoretically give you a mixture of products. They're, they're practical and kind of tricky ways to get one product over the other, but for us, ortho pair or major products. Uh, I mean, there's so many things that are just beyond the scope of the course and that are beyond explanation. If you brominate this compound here, where, do you, where will the bromine go? Do an EAS with this, this kind of metadiphenol compound, where will the bromine go? Why between the two? Yeah, it's, it's ortho to both groups. Mm -hmm. What about here? That one's ortho to this one, the pair to that one. You don't like that side better? Why do you like that side better? And this side here is ortho to this group compared to that group. So they're both directing here, here, and here. Here. They're both directing to all three places. Why did you choose the one in between the two? Wouldn't that be more sterically hindered? So why did you choose that position? Seem like you chose that position preferentially. Directly on three sides, but which one would be least likely? Probably the one between the two. Okay. Maybe the one between the two. Yeah, and why? Because if something came to attack, you know, you mentioned steric. Um, yeah, steric and hinder. But I've actually seen a reaction to that compound where. The major product is between the two sides. That defies theory. So there's something else going on there. In the end, the three sides I circled are the three theoretical sites of the bromination. And you would say there's three possible monobrominated products based on directing group theory. But you, if you excluded the group of blue carbon between the two groups, you'd actually be wrong. So there are other things other than sterics. Okay. Maybe these groups both hydrogen bond with some reacting species and bring it closer here. So even though it's crowded, the hydrogen bonding brings it there. Is that why you said the middle? Okay, or did or were you just luckily you got it right? Okay. You gotta have an argument. And if you don't have an argument and you give something that defies standard theory, well then you're kind of wrong, unless you're telling me why you're defying standard theory. But I'm showing you a case where I've seen, I think, this compound, it's I don't know what type of EAS reaction, the major product was in between the two. So there's always stuff like that. In the end, the three circled sites would be your major products. And so I would show three possible products. Um, 
based on directing group. Would you like to work any other one on this synthesis page? Yes, sir. The wild uh, nitro. Which one? The um, nitro group in the chlorine. Nitro? The, um, carbon plus triple nitrile. Nitrile. Yeah. Okay, we're group. Yeah. Okay. How do you chlorinate a benzene ring? Chlorine and aluminum trichloride. How do you put a cyanide group on a benzene? The only way you know is a diazonium reaction. Okay. Diazonium reaction ultimately comes from what type of starting material? What type of group? You did it in lab. You started with what? Amine. Yes, okay. There's your two ways to make the two groups. What order are you going to do? What type of director is this? Metal director. You got that there, you ain't going to put the chlorine ortho to it. What type of director is the chlorine? Ortho para. Well, you could put a group ortho. So which group do you want to have on first? Chlorine. So I'm going to go back to... Uh, this here. If you got chlorobenzene, can you make this compound? How would you do it? Okay. Well, I already see it in my mind here. I thought backwards. I'm going to basically, I need an amino group here. So I'm going to, how are we going to get an amino here? You've done it in lab. It took two weeks. First, you did nitric acid with traditionally uh, sulfuric acid. You did not use that in lab, but traditionally uh, it is. Uh, that would give nitrobenzene, right? Now we need to reduce the nitro. How do you want to do that? To the amino, I would do that with maybe zinc and HCl, or tin, or iron. Or you can do hydrogenation with like palladium or carbon. Now we can do diazonium and get our product. We need to first react this with what? Nitrous acid, oh no. Then come back with what after we make the diazonium? Copper cyanide, replace the diazonium with the cyano group. Diazonium reactions. Thought process. Where'd the chlorine go? I, uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> scared me. <laughs> it, it's there. Okay. It was our ortho pair director. Okay. On, on synthesis problems, when I show ortho, will you also get pair as a product? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're just having to purify that out. Okay. There's no way to avoid that. So that's an ortho para director. Okay. <clears throat> Plus para. But we're just kind of ignoring that. We're going to have to get rid of that, purify it. There's no other way to do it. Called what? Aniline? 
I ask you to learn that back in August. Okay? And this is 2 chloroanilin or orthochloroanilin? Yes. We could have just put the, bit, put the nitro group on. We could have just made aniline first. Do the same chemistry with no chlorine. Okay? Then we could have made this by chlorinating it. Now, I know more than you do. You've got to be careful about using Lewis acid here. And you may not even need a Lewis acid catalyst because it's strong activator sometimes don't need catalyst. But traditionally, you know, what, what Lewis acid would you use here? Yeah, you just got to be careful because this may complex here and turn this into a meta director. That's a little bit vague. Traditionally, it's ortho para director. We'll give this plus plus para. Yeah, you could you have two ways to get your your correct regiochemistry. Yeah, I don't know which way I did it in the answer key, but you did it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a good reaction. So like I said, there's often multiple ways to do multi-step synthesis. And as we move along more and more, there will become even more ways. As you build your toolbox of reactions that you know how to use. See up here you've got a meta relationship. Is that a, is that a meta director? No. So up here you cannot iodinate aniline. Mm -hmm. Is there a precursor to this though that may be a meta director? Yeah. What would that be? Nitro. A nitro. Mm -hmm. So what, while you have nitrobenzene, you can iodinate. Then reduce the nitro to the amino. Other ones over there. Okay, you've got the answer key. You can see, and you can ask other questions. If you, if you see an alternative route, you can ask. All right. This is the very last one. How how do you get all those bromines in metal relationships? Did you see that one? I mentioned in my email actually uses an amino group. You guys good today? Seem a little reticent. How's your day so far? Test two. Yeah? Aniline. You know aniline was discovered many times. You know the story of that? In 1826, Professor Unva Durbin reacted indigo, a natural product, with sodium hydroxide and got an oily liquid. Indigo is a solid. Oily liquid that had weakly basic properties. They didn't know what this was. They didn't know what a double bond was in 1826. They didn't know the structure of benzene, okay? All he knew was, I have oily liquid. This is, no, this is not indigo. What did I make here? He called his product crystalline. I don't know why, because it was an oily liquid. <laughs> That's kind of like how they call Iceland, Greenland, Greenland. It really ain't nothing but ice, but they call it Greenland. Iceland, though, is the more beautiful green country, right? It's because they didn't want people coming there. So they said, this is just Iceland. Okay? I don't know why he called this. Uh, 1834. Runge took coal tar, another natural product, and extracted it and purified it and tried to get a pure product out of it. Coal tar is a mixture of lots of stuff, hydrocarbon. He got an oily liquid that was weekly basic. He named it cyanide because it turned blue when reacted with hypochlorite of lime. You ever used hypochlorite of lime? Yes, that's what you use to oxidize the diol. Remember the diol? Okay. Lime typically means calcium. Calcium. Okay. 
calcium hydrochloride. And if you react aniline with calcium hydrochloride, it will turn blue because it's being oxidized and it forms a, um, a very quinone type structure probably. Okay. What was that? Eight years later? Okay, in 1840, six years later. Uh, Fritsche took indigo with sodium hydroxide. That's the same thing as Uber Durbin up there, right? He got an oily liquid. Apparently he didn't know a Professor Uber Durbin or whoever that was. Because he named his aniline since anil plant was a common source of indigo. <laughs> so it was kind of like an amine, aniline, he called it. But he didn't know what these other chemists were doing. I assume they were chemists, if they're doing chemistry, that's what we call them. If you cook, you are a cook. No matter what you cook, you're cooking. Maybe you're not a chef, but you're a cook. Zenon in 1842 took nitrobenzene and reduced it. You can reduce with a variety of things, zinc hydroacl. You can also reduce with sodium sulfide. Okay? And he got an oily liquid. He named it <coughs> Bizadam. Because it came from benzene. And it seemed to be an amine. Benzadam, that's a good name right there. Okay? None of these people knew what the other people were doing. Apparently they were not publishing their results and nobody was reading. At this point, someone said, we ought to create a journal so we can write down and share with everybody so we don't keep doing the same thing and having all these names. Okay? In 1843, a year later, Hoffman, you may have heard of him, Hoffman Elimination, he showed that all these products were the same compound. Maybe he did all these reactions and he said, hey, hey guys, every, you're all getting the same compound. Let's call it the same name. And he, it became known as aniline. Okay, who knows? Instead of calling it aniline, we could be calling it bezadam. <laughs> okay, but Professor Hoffman apparently suggested aniline as the name. Okay, this made Professor Fritze happy. Okay, Allen was discovered many times. Okay, test on Monday. Uh, I'll show you one more thing. Uh, this compound here is a compound which I have made a good bit, needed a good bit for various research projects. Okay? Can you name that compound real quick? Okay. 2-bromo-5-nitrophenol. Yes. Key, per key precursor to drug synthesis. that I and res fellow researchers developed. You cannot buy it, so we had to make it. Then we would do something with it. We would do a Williams and Ether synthesis here, we would replace the bromine here. Can you do an NAS here? Strong electron withdrawing group, ortho repair. Yeah, there's chemistry you can do that. But you gotta, if you, you gotta make that first. You can't buy it. How do we make it? First way is you can buy that over there. It is expensive, but you can buy this. And so you can brominate. Would you expect the bromine to go here? Yes. Or the pair director? Yes. Well, guess what? It does. But the yield is very low. The purification is very tedious because you've got mixtures. Because the bromine also goes here and here. Ortho and pair. Okay, so you get three products. Very hard to purify. You end up, you can get this, but low yield. That's not good when this is expensive. So we developed another procedure to, to make this compound because 
This compound is actually cheaper. That's kind of odd. Usually the more substituents you get on the ring, the more expensive. This is actually cheaper. The amino. What do we need to do? Replace the amino with a bromine. Can you do that? Yes. Nitrous acid followed by copper bromide. Okay. Able to make this compound a 70% yield from a cheaper starting material. Does this sound better? Yeah. Easier purification. All right. So cheaper, higher yield, less time to purify. Okay. So using the diazonium here, replacing the amine, instead of replacing an H in the DAS reaction. Um, okay, handout today. So today. Uh, we can begin new material. Let's see what we can look at here. Test three, we begin carbonyl chemistry, the rest of the semester. Okay. Test three is over carboxylic acid derivatives, which include esters, amides, acid chlorides. Okay. What is in a carboxylic acid derivative? How do you recognize them? We'll talk about that. Uh, this first page shows a variety of carboxylic acid derivatives and within drugs. Of course, carboxylic acid, right? Zyrtec and histamine. Anybody ever taken antihistamines? Okay. Carboxylic acid. Allegra. Okay, these have carboxylic acids. Of course, they have alcohol groups, uh, tertiary amine groups, and uh, three, three benzene rings, three aromatic rings. This ring is not aromatic, though, correct? Okay. Um, esters. Esters is where we just put our group on the oxygen, right? It could be methyl. So it would be called a methyl ester. Plavix. It's a thioester. We did not see this in organic one. But instead of an OR, an SR, the F does nothing here. It's a thioester. And here's a regular ester. OR. S-alkyl, O-alkyl. Thioesters you occasionally see, and you also see them in biochemistry a good bit. So that's why I mentioned it here. But we didn't we've not seen thioester before, have we? No, we've seen we've seen thiol and disulfide. Okay? Thioester. Carboxamides. Amides or I usually say amides. Is that an amide? Tertiary sure amide? Yeah. Carbonyl, okay. Instead of an OH, you're an OR, it's a nitrogen, yeah. Lipitor, amide. It's also got this parole ring, aromatic. And then it's got three benzene rings. One of them has an F on it. Carboxylic acid down there. And the cyano group, or nitrile, that is a carboxylic acid derivative. Carboc How do you recognize carboxylic acid group? Do they all have carbonyls? No, there's no carbonyl here. They all have three bonds to a more electronegative atom. The carbon all, how many bonds to a more electronegative atom here? Three. How many bonds to a more electronegative atom for this carbon? Three. Every carboxylic acid derivative is going to have three bonds to a mole of the electronegative atom. Okay. Acetone. Is that a carboxylic acid derivative? Mm -hmm. How many bonds to a mole of electronegative atom does that have? Mm -hmm. Not three. Not a carboxylic acid derivative. What does that mean? If you, we can interconvert all these 
from one to another without doing redox. We're at the same oxidation state. If you convert one of these to this, that's a different oxidation state. You thus need to do redox chemistry. Okay? Um, nomenclature covered by video only. There's your handout. Posted. Uh, Want to take a trip? LSD. It's a beautiful molecule. What is that, about 20? Maybe 25 carbons? Three nitrogens and oxygen? Put them together in the right way and you've got LSD. Okay? It's got a carboxylic acid derivative in there. Where is it? Right here? What is it? Tertiary amide? Yeah. Two ethyl groups here. Lysergic acid diethyl amide is where the name comes from. Uh, the LSD. You can read about that, how it was discovered. Uh, I don't think this is in the nomenclature video. I've added more recently. Carboxylic acids, these are fatty acids. Okay. Some of these are very important to uh, your well-being. Okay. Uh, so we got the carboxylic acid group. I showed you these in, like, when we look at alkenes in organic one. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty typical. The new thing here is nomenclature. You've heard of omega-3 acids, omega-6 acids. What does that mean? No idea. So you have heard of this? What does it mean? Okay. Omega means the N. Three. Three from the N. What is three from the N? One, two, three. What over here is nine from the N? None. What is located nine from the N? Alkene. Yes, that's what this refers to. The first alkene is three from the end. It does not mean there's three alkenes in the, in the side chain. If, if, it, if that's what it was, this would be an omega-1 acid. No. N, from the end. Okay? And this one, the first alkene is what? One, two, three, four, five, six. First alkene is six from the end, so omega-6 acid. Okay? Different ones have different activities in your body. Okay. Some of them more important, some of them potentially you get too much. So the right balance of these, but that's terminology, and I want you to know that terminology uh, with the nomenclature portion. Okay, pretty straightforward. Everybody know this, what omega-6 meant? No? Okay. You think you should know it? Useful information, okay? Can you hear this a good bit? Mm -hmm. Next time you go buy your supplements, okay, you can get the right one. Okay? Fish has lots of what? Which one, okay? Ah, uh, there you go. Okay. Before we look at reactions, we'll look at little physical properties, and we'll look at acidity of phenols and carboxylic acids. Phenols as well because it fits in well here. Also a chance for us to review acid-base chemistry and pKa's, etc. Alcohol, pKa about 16. A phenol about 10. Now phenol itself is 9.95. About 10. This can vary a good bit depending on what type of substituents are on this ring. And you're not going to get much higher but you can go much lower. 
Okay? If you put three nitro groups on this and get trinitrophenol, that compound has a PKA down like one and two, one to two. How's so the nitro groups are what type of groups? Net. Withdrawers. All those withdrawing groups are going to allow that OH to become ionized to O minus. The minus is stabilized by those three withdrawing groups. Okay. Now three is most common. Imagine if you had five nitro groups on the ring. The problem is it's just hard to get that many nitro groups on the ring. Because every time you put one on the ring, what happens to the reactivity of the ring? It drops. It drops. And then you get two on there, and it becomes even more difficult. And at some point, the ring is like, hey, I'm, never, I'm not going to do an EAS reaction anymore. Uh, OK, a carboxylic acid has a pKa of about 4 to 5, typically. Benzoic acid is 4.2. So 4 to 5, about 10, but this can vary a good bit. But forget substituents, you see about 16, 10 more acidic, and then 4 to 5, most acidic of these three. Why? Well, let's look at the anions. In organic one, we always look at the stability of the conjugate base. Here's the conjugate base here. What type of stability does it have? Any resonance? No resonance. The only thing it has going for it is charges on oxygen. That's better than charge on carbon or nitrogen. Minus charge. <coughs> Phenoxide anion. What does it have going for it? Well, all these are oxygen, so we don't really need to talk about difference of electronegativity of the original atom. What does it have going for it? Resonance. We can delocalize electrons down, pi bond out. And so it's resonance delocalized. So that's why it's more stable than this, and thus that's why that's more acidic than that. More likely to form. We can do additional resonance structures. But what type of, what atom are we putting the charge on? Not oxygen, but carbon. Carbon. Does carbon like being minus? Mm -hmm. You can see, you'll, you, we can see carbon ions. Okay. It doesn't love it. But it's better than no resonance at all. Okay? Carboxylic acids. Conjugate base. Do we have resonance here? Yes. This needs to be more precise. These electrons move in here. And these electrons move up. That arrow is good. Right? That gives this. Resonance in the charge is put onto... What type of atom? Another oxygen. Really makes this stable. Delocalize it to another oxygen, really make it, and that's why this is more acidic. Note, you actually have more resonance structures for phenol. Because you can put charge here and here. But these resonance structures, you're putting it on carbon. And even though there's more resonance structures, it's not as good as the second one here. Because there's only two total here. But it's so good to put it on another oxygen. Now, of course, the true structure is a blend, and the blend is going to look like what? Of the anion. Double bond or single bond between here? Bond and a half. Single bond or double bond? Bond and a half. Charge on this oxygen, neutral or minus? Partial, Partial minus. minus. Up here. Partial minus. Yes. And so the resonance hybrid, which bond is longer? Which CEO bond is longer here? They are the exact same. It is a perfect blend through here because these are perfect 50 50 contributors. One's not better than the other. So the carboxylate. Okay? You've no names. What do you call this anion? Oxide. Alkoxide. Yeah? What do you call this? Phenoxide. Phenoxide. What do you call this? There's no, ending, there's no oxide in it. You call this a...
It's a carboxylic acid in the anion form. Carboxylate anion. Just call it the carboxylate ion or anion. Uh, because of the acidity, regular alcohols are not soluble in aqueous base by deprotonation. Now, ethanol is soluble in water, but it ain't because it's being deprotonated. Okay. A bigger alcohol would fit this. Okay. Because hydroxide is not going to deprotonate this. Hydroxide will deprotonate a phenol. This was a chemical test before with NMR. So it is soluble in sodium hydroxide. Carboxylic acids are sodium in sodium hydroxide. They're also sodium soluble in bicarbonate, which is a weaker base, like baking soda, okay? where phenols are not. Effects of sub uh, substituents. Now this is going to fit in with our substituent effects, and we're out of time here, almost. We'll pick up here on Friday. Electron donating groups versus electron withdrawing groups. This is the same description we've used for EAS. For example, what would be an example of an electron withdrawing group on the ring? Most common uh, noted is nitro group. There's other. That's group. Okay. What about a chlorine? Would that be a net? Donator or withdrawal? Yeah, it's group three. The same groupings can be used here. Okay? So we'll use the same terminology. And so we'll look at this on Friday. And it'll actually be a little review of our electronic effects for the EAS reaction. Okay? Here's the trinitrophenol. It can't have actually lower than I thought, 0.38. It's so acidic, it's called picric acid. But it's actually a phenol. Okay? All right, have a good day, guys. Please be looking ahead at this for Friday.